there. Have you ever wanted to implement guided math into your day, but you're like, I don't have enough time for that. I only have 60 minutes and I have so much to do. There's no way that I can squeeze in math centers. Have you been there? Because I have, and that's probably one of my most frequently asked questions that I get is, Marcy, how do you fit all of the components of guided math into your day? Well, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter if you have 60 minutes, 70 minutes, or even 90 minutes, you can absolutely fit all of the components into your schedule. So how do we do that? It's about managing your time, taking the time frame that you have, breaking it up into small chunks so that each component fits into your schedule. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's dive in and get started. Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Marcy Bernithi and I am the teacher author behind saddleupforsecondgrade.com where I love helping teachers just like you implement guided math successfully into their day without feeling stressed and overwhelmed because I have definitely been there. So today we're gonna to talk about how you can break up the components of guided math to create a schedule that fits your needs. So first, let's review the components of guided math. You have your warm up, your whole group lesson, independent practice, followed by small groups and a reflection. So you might be thinking like, that's a lot of things, I don't have time for that but I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can. So today I'm gonna to share some example schedules with you. I'm gonna give an example of a 60 minute math block and a 90 minute math block. If you have a time frame that is different, take what I say and the tips that I give and just kind of tweak them to meet the best needs for you and your students. So first up, I wanna talk about a 60 minute math block. 60 minutes, might not seem like a lot of time. You might not think that you can fit in all of the guided math components, but I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can. And here is how. So some of the things I want you to keep in mind is that when you're planning your instruction, you need to keep things really simple. So I sometimes would tend to have a tendency to, let's say you, purchase a unit off of Teachers Pay Teachers. It could even be one of my units. And you're like, oh, there's this has so many great things in it. And so then you plan in one day, you might plan to do an anchor chart and then you do something with manipulatives. And then you're like, okay, then we're gonna play this partner game. And then we're gonna do a craft. And then we're gonna do something in our math journal. That's too much. The key to guided math is keeping your lessons short and simple so that you have time to fit in all of the components. With guided math, your core teaching is not gonna take place during your whole group lesson. Your core teaching is actually going to take place at the small group table where you can differentiate your instruction to meet your students' needs. So let's break it down. How can we fit all of that into a 60 minute math block? So we're gonna start out with the first component and that is going to be a five minute warm up. That's gonna be followed by a 20 minute whole group lesson. That 20 minute whole group lesson can be broken down into different ways. And it is also that 20 minutes is also going to include independent practice. So depending on where you are in the concept, maybe you break it up 10 and 10. You do a quick 10 minute mini lesson, 10 minutes for independent practice. If it is a concept that you are not introducing and you are beginning to review, then maybe you spend less time during your mini lesson and more time for independent practice. So you're gonna spend 20 minutes for your whole group lesson, independent practice. Then you are going to have 30 minutes of small groups and you're gonna have two 15 minute station rotations. Now I know that might not seem like a lot of time, but it's very manageable. Whenever I had a 60 minute math block, this is what I would do. I would shoot to see two groups a day for 15 minutes each. And then you're gonna follow that up with a quick 
five minute reflection that you may or may not have to do every single day. So that extra five minutes can be used for more small group time. You can easily take a brain break or you can apply it wherever you see fit. If you wanna see more groups, you could easily do three 10 minute rotations. I personally have never been able to kind of squeeze in a small group lesson in 10 minutes, but I have worked with teachers who absolutely can. They have their classroom management down, their kids come to the small group table, they teach their lesson, and then they send them on their way. So if you are one of those superhero, like rock star teachers that can squeeze in a small group in 10 minutes, I am giving you like all the high fives because that's amazing and it's absolutely doable. Now, something else I wanna recommend, if you have 60 minutes or less when it comes to your math block, because I fully understand you may not have control over your schedule and you may be given only a certain amount of time to teach math. Maybe your district tells you you can only teach 45 minutes or 60 minutes or whatever it might be. So if you have 60 minutes or less, I also would recommend something called a rotated schedule. And when you do a rotated schedule, you teach in something called power hour. What this means is that during your week, so like let's say day one, you are only gonna do whole group independent practice. Well, and your warm up and your reflection, but you're not gonna teach any small groups. Then on day two, you're gonna teach in something called power hour. This is when you only teach in small groups. You're not gonna do a whole group lesson that day. So with power hour, you can have um, four 15 minute rotations if you'd like. You can have three 20 minute rotations, but during your power hour time, you are not gonna have a whole group lesson. You're only teaching in small groups. So then it repeats. So day three, you're gonna do whole group independent practice. Then day four, you're gonna do another power hour. And then day five can just kind of be used as your flex day. You can review, you can do another power hour. You can play a game, maybe you need to assess. Um, but I highly recommend if you have 60 minutes or less to consider teaching in an alternated schedule using power hour. Then the next example that I'm gonna give you is for a 90 minute math block. So research actually shows that 90 minutes is the ideal time frame to fit in all of the guided math components. There are several different ways that you can break up 90 minutes. The first example that I'm gonna share, both start out with a five minute warm up, followed by a 25 minute whole group lesson. You can break this up several different ways. You can do 15 minutes for your mini lesson, 10 minutes for independent practice. So you can kind of play around with that time frame, or you can stick with 20 minutes and you can do 10 and 10 or 15 and five, however you see fit. Then you're gonna spend 45 minutes in your small group rotations. You can do three 15 minute station rotations, which is what I, that was my goal. That's what I always shot for. You can do two 20 minute rotations. The thing with small groups is that they're very flexible. You might meet with some groups for 20 minutes and then you might only meet with some groups for 10. It just kind of depends on the group and based on what those students need. Then you're gonna follow up with a five minute reflection and that extra 10 minutes is going to be used for brain breaks. I highly recommend that you take the time to incorporate short, simple brain breaks into your schedule because it is, I actually say like, it can kind of make or break how your math block is gonna go. Your kids only can only have that attention span for so long. And so by giving them just three to five minutes to loosen up and dance around the room and to be silly, then that can recharge their brain for their next rotation. So typically with a 90 minute math block, I would take break number one in between independent practice and before we do our first small group rotation. And then um, my, my, <laughs> my second brain break, I would do in between the second and the third rotations. 
you can pull up a quick video on YouTube. Go Noodle is my absolute favorite website when it comes to incorporating brain breaks because they have all different kinds of dance videos and mindset and silly songs. And so taking that short and simple time to just kind of quickly refresh their brains can make all of the difference. So there you have it. Those are just some quick examples of how you can fit guided math into your schedule if you have a different time frame. So let's say you have 70 minutes or 75 minutes. Take the information that I've given you from this video and tweak it and apply it to meet the needs of your classroom. Remember, guided math is flexible. If you are looking for more information on guided math, you can check out my blog post that I have as well, where I go into more detail about this particular topic, and I'm gonna link that in the description below. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because each week I release a new video that shares content specifically for you. If you have any questions, as always, leave me a comment and I will see you guys in the next one.